Welcome back, everybody, to Comic Shop Talk on the Late Night Collectors community. I'm your host, Nico, and joining with me today, as always, is my co-host, Chris. How you doing, man? Hey, not too bad. How are you? Good, good. Not too bad. Not too bad. Big week this week, guys. You got lots. We got a lot to talk about here this week. Uh, yeah, uh, surprisingly, uh, a really large week of a lot of new things starting and also ending this one. So, yeah, strap in. We got a lot to talk about. Stay tuned at the end. We will also be going over some of the image solicitations for, I think it's uh, July uh, coming up here at the end. We'll kind of, we'll highlight some books maybe that are coming up and you might be interested in it at the end of the show. This week, of course, uh, we are talking about the comics that came out for April 26, 2023. And make sure you're subscribed to the channel. If you like what you saw here today, guys, if you stop by to check out this show, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit that like button, the thumbs up notification bell to be notified of when these sh shows do go out and uh we also have all kinds of different other shows here on the late night collectors community you can check our playlists and uh if this is your first time coming here you know we do get into the books we do talk about what happens in a lot of them so be forewarned spoiler warning we try to you know be uh smart about maybe some of the big spoilers we might try to steer away if we can but you know we do got to talk about the books and give you our thoughts on them and review it and also we show off the art here. So yeah, so just be forewarned uh, about that if it's your first time coming through here. Uh, but yeah, again, big week. A lot to talk about, a lot to get to, Chris. That all being said. All right, let's talk comics. Talk some comics. Here's Cheers. It. All right. First up on the docket this week, we got a new release of from the dawn of DC, Green Arrow number one. Which I think being re uh, Chris read online, uh, Chris, what did you think of this one? Yeah, you know the way the Green Arrow's been pushed lately. Uh, that's what kind of got me interested in in this title, and it's pretty much my first sort of solo Green Arrow story I've written or I've read in the, I guess around this timeline. So there's a lot to see what's going on there. You know, kind of introduced to the, the Green Arrow family, which I wasn't too familiar with. But overall, I thought it was a decent issue. You know, nothing earth shattering, but uh, great art and a decent story so far. Yeah, I think this artist used to be one of the artists that did Fantastic Four when Dan Slott was writing it. Sean Zaki, or whatever, I think it's, I don't know how you say his name, but yeah. And Joshua Williamson writing Green Arrow, who of course wrote him um, in his appearances throughout Dark Crisis. Like he's the one that wrote that event. And uh, I, I like, you know, Josh Williamson, of course, also writing Superman currently. I like I like some of his work. Uh, not everything clicks for me, I think. But uh, this was a pretty good debut issue. And like you said, for someone who hasn't really read Green Arrow, I thought they did a pretty good job of covering, you know, his whole origin in a couple of pages here. Uh, you know, or like, I guess the events that he's kind of been up to as of lately. And they kind of get into the very briefly, like, you know, the fact that he, you know, he's he ends up on an island at the start here again and freaked out because obviously if you even if you watch the show, you know about his whole thing about ending up on an island, right? So yeah. I thought that was funny. And it kind of seems like a man out of time story here within it. There's a mystery going on. There's an interesting thread, like you said, with the rest of the Green Arrow family of characters at this point in time. You know, Connor Hawk, his son, and he got Red Arrow back again. I guess he was just come back. Or I guess Connor Hawk's just come back from the dead and you got Black Canary up in the mix. Yeah, and great art. I thought this was a good debut issue, and it, there, it, I guess it was pretty successful because I seen a, uh, a a post from Joshua Williamson online saying that they've bumped this from a six issue miniseries to a twelve issue min, uh, miniseries now. So it obviously, I guess, it made uh, a, a a good impact in terms of like uh, people wanting a Green Arrow book. So you know, I, I mean, that's pretty that's pretty awesome. I think that they kind of. They extended its run already, right off of based off of these first week sales, I guess. So, yeah, and he's Green Arrow. He's still lost from like Dark Crisis events, right? In this issue. Well, yeah, I think that this was he was never really fully returned from Dark Crisis. That's correct. Yeah, you know, that's what they reference, I think, in this. Okay, yeah, that's kind of why like why watches up on some alien world isn't it yeah and wherever that he's ended up uh red uh red arrow's daughter reunited daughter that he literally just reunited with i guess i think also ends up there by the end of this issue right i think that that's the first right so yeah uh yeah no it was good man i liked it i thought it was a good like i think it was a good solid debut issue there's manhunters if you're familiar with those guys in this world that they've they've show up in wherever the hell that they they are 
Uh, I guess more we'll learn more to come on that. Uh, but yeah, very interesting stuff so far. I think it was a really good debut issue, and uh, I'll definitely continue to I think check out this one online for as long as it holds my interest. Even even with the twelve issue announcement, I, I think it was uh, you know I do like Green Arrow, and it's been a while, so yeah. So yeah, I'll probably one. keep on reading it online. I'll give it a I'll give it a three point seven five. I think I'm gonna go a, a solid four out of five on this one. Actually, I thought, yeah, I thought it was a really strong debut issue. I really, I really enjoyed it. So, uh, sins of sinister dominion number one, Chris, which I can't even hold up my issue because, yeah, mine was um, didn't come in, so I had to get put a reorder in on this one. Sadly, but, uh, but yeah, what'd you what'd you think of this wrap up of the uh, the event here? I don't know. I had to read this a few times to figure out what's going on, or at least twice. Um, I don't know about this whole Sins of Sinister event altogether. You know, it had some good, it had some good issues in between, but like the way they try and show this crazy world, like that Galactus Ghost Rider, that's some crazy stuff, and I'm all for that. But I really had a lot of this was over my head, I think. And uh, but the way it wrapped up, you know, I'm still not sure how it wrapped up. Like, what did Mora? She ended up resetting herself or something, and I don't know. I don't know how Mother Righteous ends up back in their world. You know, I'm happy that that Rasputin Four or whatever she seems to be mm. in the in the mix now. I guess in the new in the present day. So I don't know. I thought she was a pretty cool character. And as for the story, um, I don't know. Like as to where things are in the in the in Krakoa now, I guess that seems pretty interesting. Thing that uh, a few people had to get sent down to the pit just uh, just because. Yeah, How'd it you was feel okay. About I'm with you. I don't think it was the best, but um, you know, I did find the uh, the like the story beats towards the end of the issue. Like, I did find interesting. Like, I did like how they ended up in the pit. Like, the main council members. I'm kind of interested to see what happens now in Immortal X Men once that comes back. Kind of moving forward with that storyline given yeah. the fact that there is less council members at the moment, because you know that they're just going to have to replace them with somebody maybe, uh, you know, um, for a period of, period of time, right? I don't know if this person, you know, Mother Superior or whatever that shows up, like what her deal is, because it looks like she's going to be sticking around now. So, like, I think it left us with some interesting things moving forward. And, you know, Sinister, of course, got eaten up in there, but he warned them that there's still a version of himself outside of, like, time and space or something. It seems like, like, outside of, like, it seems like he made his way out of this scenario somehow, right? Like, it... yeah, I guess that's a big takeaway from this whole event is that there's some sort of sinister god out there, but it's not him. That's the part. It's another where, sinister out there beating. Yeah, that's the, the part where it's a bit there. confusing that I don't necessarily. Uh, I yeah. think I get all understand what really all happened there, but, um, but yeah, you know, some interesting things that kind of move forward to kind of focus on. I think, especially with that whole fall of X stuff coming up. So we'll see how it plays out. I mean, I'm still very much invested in you know this corner of the of the Marvel universe, the X Men stuff right now, but. Was this a great event? It was okay, even by X Men standards. I think there's been better X Men events that have gone on during the. Coca-Cola. It was good, but it wasn't great. <clears throat> I I agree. I agree. I mean, like, I think the whole event is kind of like a three point five, three point seven five territory. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, I. You know, I I I don't think all of the miniseries were good. I think they all kind of had flaws i think at times like they i don't I think, think any of one them... issue out of each series was good uh i i think immoral x-men was probably still the best i think i liked the first two issues of that but it didn't drop the ball towards the end and then other se- other mini series picked it back up at the end and were not good throughout you know what i mean i agree with you in the sense that yeah i think yeah. everyone had like a strong really strong issue in them but not like you know, not three bangers, you know, out the gate for any of them really. And, uh, depending on what you kind of, uh, you know, if you were to pick up the whole collection of this, I'm not sure it's going to be very mixed bag. I feel like this event, quite frankly. So, um, yeah, but I can say it didn't get me hyped for buying all the stuff for the fall of X stuff, you know, now I'm more leery on, uh, which, which comics I'm going to buy in this fall of X, you know, not kind of just go out everything that's, Everything that's fall of X or fall of X tie in them to buy. Yeah, no, no, I'm not. I, I never planned on that anyways, but they uh 
but yeah, with that, with that being said, yeah, this was an interesting ending to the, to this, to the event. I, I mean, removing Emma off the, off the board there, professor X gene, these are big players within the council. Right. So like, I, you know, and I feel it's interesting that this person just shows up and they're just going to take her word. I mean, that was the thing that was interesting. She said the whole thing was that sinister was restarting, rebooting the timeline and inserting knowledge that he had into the, into his head, like basically when the, so when the timeline renewed for more, whatever he learned, he basically would travel that information yeah. through himself to the old, to the renewed uh, sinister, uh, uh, essentially. Right. That's what the whole breakdown of it, I felt from my understanding was at the end of that, which was interesting. But again, she kind of shows up and they just take her word for this, which is what happened. And we have no reason to believe that she's got, she's an enemy of theirs right now. But who the hell knows, right? We're talking about people from a thousand years from now, right? So I, yeah. it's interesting. Like I, I, I think, um, you know, does she have ulterior motives? I don't know, right? I guess we'll find out. So, uh, so what, what, so what'd you give this then? I'll give it a three point five. Yeah, I agree with you. Three point five. Yeah, yeah. All right. Next up, Daredevil number ten. Daredevil ten. All right, what you think of this? I don't know. I think this was. I think the action was great in here, but freaking the story, I have to read this one twice too to figure out what's going on. And uh, I don't know. I guess it's like it's almost like the Civil War sort of deal there with, you know, I guess the way Devil, Daredevil sees things and, you know, Captain America, you know, being the the Boy Scout or kind of the law and order type of person he is, but there's good scenes with him and with Daredevil and Spider-Man for sure. But I'm not sure Spider-Man even fit Spider-Man, you know, mm -hmm. the way they wrote him. He seemed a little extra serious here where, he, you know, you haven't seen him serious like that in a long time. He kind of has this? been this way. And I feel like Zdarsky's dare, uh, Daredevil run though, because even at the start of the run, when he kind of, he was the one that kind of told him he needs to stop being Daredevil originally. Right. I think he's always come to him as like some sort of self-serious friend who cares yet someone who's trying to be responsible, the responsible one out of the two of them, which, yeah, I don't know how, I mean, yeah, sure. Matt Murdoch has been irresponsible at times throughout his career, but he's still a hero. So I think you're right in the sense, like, it's almost like Spider-Man's playing the Captain America role in this situation more so, right? Because usually yeah. the judgy one, I feel like, which you get in this. But I agree with you. The action was fucking top notch in this issue. I mean, the fight yeah. between him, him taking down Elektra alone, and then you got the Spider-Man. Did Elektra take a chill from the back of the head at one point? Yeah. Wow. Also, also, um, and then yeah, he ends up taking her down, like arresting her essentially. And you know. and then you got the whole thing with Matt getting uh spy you know coming uh hug going for the hug with Spider Man and basically popping his web yeah. his web pack like uh that was like you know tucked in his uh he's just in yeah utility belt or whatever yeah yeah basically burst his web uh, his uh, his web fluid pack his cartridge and uh, basically tied him up all, all up in the webs as a result which I thought was just awesome too but and even in the in the uh, inner monologue there he was just like yeah he's like nice guy just naive <laughs> just like, you know, I'm like, just too nice yeah just too nice I, I liked that I was like he's like hey come yeah. on man. just trust me like come in for the hug here he's like we'll take care of you and he's just like ah. Fuck you. <laughs> like, you know what I, mean? like, no. I, I thought that was awesome. I was like, oh, that's great. Like, that's great stuff because, like, you know, even in this moment, Matt's willing to go there somewhat. Like, I don't know how he, by the end of this, like, how he's going to favor with the rest of these guys after everything he's done here. I mean, again, he is a hero at the end of the day, but he's, he's made a lot of mistakes here. I wouldn't say I was confused by the story at all. I don't know about you, but I, 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 I loved this issue. I thought it was a great issue. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. It lost me somewhere along the way in the beginning with with all these bad guys. I don't know with that reset and the storm winds and and what's his face. I got to go back to find what's that. Uh, Foggy and Sticker were puppets of the hand and how that plays in. And is he dead at the end? Are they supposed to be covered up in that avalanche? Daredevil and Electra. It, well, no, I think it's just Daredevil. Daredevil escaped. I don't think Electra did, unless I missed something there. Did he grab? 
Okay, so I thought he went back there because he's like, you know, they're all talking about, oh, just to sit with you for a moment and then the freaking the snow comes down or something. Oh, unless I'm wrong. I know Daredevil escaped because Spider-Man freaked out about him. Um, so yeah, maybe, maybe she's also, she also escaped. I, I, cause I thought that was the whole point of him going back. Like you said, on that plane was the fact that he's like, oh, they're arresting my wife or whatever. And he freaked out. And, uh, and, uh, but I think that Matt's the only one I think that is, might have escaped there towards the end. I don't, I don't know if Alexa did, but, um, again, I don't know where they're going to go from here. He's, uh, you know, he's, he might be injured in the mountains somewhere and, uh, you know, who knows? Yeah, I don't know when this one's ending. Is like Chip does, or is this run ending when Chip finishes, or, or do you know if it's moving on? So, the, so Chip has said publicly that the series is ending soon. They haven't announced the issue that it is ending on, but I guess they're moving into the final act right now. And uh, yeah. he already knows the writer that's taking over. Okay, and, so it's just uh, someone taking over then. And, and and he is and uh and he i mean they may relaunch it i don't know but he says that he knows the next person up to bat like they're not gonna basically end the series and he and he did you know he did say like he left the character in a very interesting position for the next writer because daredevil's got a storied history of a lot of great writers that have been on this title and with the where they leave matt in his life basically at the end of, of it right because like you know he, there's a lot of people that have fucked over matt murdoch quite badly when they've left the book right they're just like okay he's in jail now see you later <laughs> you know I mean? yeah so i'm interested to see like where he like uh, who they announced first of all because they haven't announced the next writer you know he said that he you know it's a good writer but who the hell knows these guys like just sometimes say it yeah the first guy everybody's gonna say oh it's a great writer coming in Right, so or not be that Joran Grunberson or whatever. I fucking hope not. <laughs> Joran Grunberson or whatever her name is. Yeah. <laughs> so, what'd you give this one? I'll give it a three point seven five. I think you probably liked it more than I did. Yeah, I be I believe I did. I give this a four point two five. Strong issue. Speaking of strong issues, at least in my opinion, Chris, Unstoppable Doom Patrol number two. Yeah, I'm like once again, I read this quickly online, and um, you know, I'm not a big super fan of Doom Patrol, but I thought it's a fun issue. You know, you get the don't you know, they have like the Doom Patrol headquarters kind of layout set up in there at one point. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, that's always fun to see. Love that. You know, but uh, like I kind of the inner politics of the Doom Patrol. I'm not really too familiar with that. And uh, you know, we got somebody trying to sending a, a mole or a rat in there to figure out what's going on. That's okay. So, it, was good. it was a good read. Yeah. I mean, I guess in that sense, I'm a, little, I'm a bit more familiar in doom patrol than you are. Uh, what I didn't notice in the first issue though, is that crazy Jane is actually the new professor of the group, which I didn't realize. I don't think that, I think that went over my head the first time I read the first issue, which I really enjoyed still, but so crazy Jane or crazy Alice, whatever crazy Jane, I think is her name. Yeah. She's, she is who this version, like, cause she's the one with the many personalities. That's, that's who the professor is. That's running basically the doom patrol right now is one of the members that used to that previous members of the doom patrol. So that's interesting. And then the other interesting part is Dr. Calder here is still involved in like some sort of advisory fucking position, but yet, you know, she isn't really that big of a fan of that. And already because he's the professor and he can't be trusted, he, he's kind of like, he's like kind of like a more shadier Professor X, let's say, if you can believe that. Yeah. <laughs> professor X is shady at the best of times too. But he he's already trying to like finagle his way in, like trying to like take over the group, it seems like again in this issue. But I love that they showed, like like you said, their, their compound. They revealed that there's other people working with the Doom Patrol here got an appearance by flex mentalo which is pretty awesome who's like apparently like the guy who's like trait like uh is like their you know the guy who does all the training and stuff like that in the in the, in their base which is pretty awesome um i like this like uh like one of the, the the psychoanalysts there or whatever like the psychiatrist or whatever is this like this person that's got all these like aliens <laughs> in herself like fifth dimensional yeah. beings or something all comp uh comp yeah, that was pretty awesome. Uh, yeah, there's some just some really interesting ideas in here and yeah, really great. 
Peacemaker showing up. That's always good. Peacemaker, and this is basically the John Cena version of Peacemaker, which is awesome. And this whole thing about him basically having a little spy in the compound there with this uh, yeah. with this guy who's got this slug uh, in his, his – it, like, comes out of his chest. And, it, you know, the whole thing with him getting Suicide Squad bomb in the head getting killed at the end of this issue. And then you find yeah. out that the actual spy is the slug itself. You know, spoilers, well, but – I don't want to spoil it, but that's not the end. The kid gets blown up. Yeah, it's a sad, it's a sad fucking moment at the end of this. Like you just see his nose like starting to bleed, and he like flies off into the distance. <laughs> like, don't they gotta toss some too to get a, like to get a safe distance? Yeah, because because he, he you know he he did the whole Suicide Squad thing yeah. where he got the you know the bomb in, in their head right. And peacemakers go in there, like flipping the switch. Like, what the hell's wrong with this thing? And meanwhile, I guess they they pushed, they 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 stalled it with their power. Yeah, I think like, there's some jammer on there or something. Yeah, and there's somebody in the basement. I don't know what the hell's going on. I'm just I'm just a little upset because this is only a six issue miniseries, and I feel like they're planting a lot of seeds right now mm, that yeah. they can they can really, you know, I think stretch this thing out. Like, I haven't heard any announcements of this and extending this miniseries, but I. You know, whatever. I'll take what I can get. This has been this has been great so far. I really enjoyed this issue. I think there's a lot of interesting balls in the in the air right now, and you know, and and the characters are interesting, and the art's interesting. Good stuff. Good good issue. Again, yep. some of these Don and DC books, I think the ones that have been coming out of this wave, uh, have been really solid so far. I've been happy with a couple of these titles. So yeah, uh, what'd you give this? I'll give it a three point seven five. I liked it, and I'll read it on. But like I said, I'm still catching up on everything. Uh, yeah, I'll give it a 4.25, maybe even 4.5 territory. It's a, it's in the running for uh, my favorite of the week. I'll tell you that guy. I started off the off the top here. This uh, this show, it's definitely in the running. I'm not sure what is going to win this week, but uh, it's it's in the running. It's a good issue, really great. Uh, Chris, Action Comics 1054. Action Comics 1054. Got the three stories in here, and I think these stories are starting to pick up. All of them. Oh, shit. I guess the art's good. I thought there was some dirt on my comic, but it was the art in there. Yeah. But uh, the stories are all picking up in here. I thought they were all decent stories. You know, none of them were filler. Well, the third one, of course, I didn't really like the third one. But in the first one, I guess, I didn't even know what they're doing here. Still fighting with Paolo. And I think, I guess, oh, yeah, this one here, Superman really shows, I guess, how compassionate he is. Because he ends up sort of beating with Paolo. You know, some good fight scenes in there. And then at the end of it, I, you find out that Metallo is being, um, I guess, manipulated by somebody. It's like a, somebody that's playing his sister. And that's why, you know, he's doing all this stuff. And then, you know, Metallo's like, oh, how are you going to help me, Superman? I wouldn't help you. And he goes, I'll still help you. Don't worry, blah, blah, blah. And he shows, I think Superman shows off some new power set in here, too. Because uh, uh, this Metallo, I guess, can... I think it's in this one where he throws out some kryptonite and Superman basically says kryptonite doesn't bother me anymore. I got a new power set that, that outweighs this kryptonite stuff. What the hell? I think it's in this one. If, if you go to a few pages, he turns into like a, I don't know. He has like some freaking blue Superman comes out and freaking crushes somebody. Yeah. Right there. That's yeah, around there. That's where he's talking about how the, the kryptonite doesn't bother him. I guess the, the war world, Mother boxes, I guess, really agree with his uh, his molecular structure or something. I don't know. They didn't really explain it too much, but he's gone through the roof, mm -hmm. and that's I guess that was interesting. Uh, the second story was uh, I guess it's with one of the super kids there when they're oh yeah, the cyborg Superman coming back too. Boom, that's pretty awesome too. And the second story, there's a little bit of a heel turn in there. And the third story was like the brickworks with, I guess, that steel Superman. It was a decent story. But overall, I, I really, it's one of the first issues I've really enjoyed from Action Comics in a while. And I'd give it a, I'd give it a four. Nice. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that does sound like it's been the best one so far. You really like that main story, especially, right? The Metallo one. Yeah, well, there's some big things happening in there. All right, we got Scorched up next, number 17. Scorched up next. Oh. Yeah, another killer another killer art or a killer cover. And the art inside here is freaking awesome as well. I think that's 
Steven Sokovia guy or oh the one from uh Hellions? I think so. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, so that's, that's all great. So that kind of got me into you know, I've been kind of picking up these issues, but I fell off reading it. But the covers are always sick, so I don't mind, you know, if they they slip like I don't really pull it, but they slip it into my pull list all the time because I ordered a few a while ago. And it looks like this is the beginning of a new story arc. I kind of I think the the last ones was something about, you know, them trying to control the dead zones and all this sort of sort of stuff that was over my head. But now uh, I guess there's some apocalyptic threat coming in. So I guess that makes the battle lines a lot easier to see. So it should be a more simplified, I guess, sort of battle. Not so much, you know, the devils and the wings and the angels and all that. You don't know who's who. Here we got them all lined up. And I guess there's some spawn or some creature from one of the planets that that this, uh, well, I don't know what it is, this ap apocalyptic threat is already taken over, and he's there telling me, look, you got to fight. And we'll see how that goes. And they're quick reads. It's a two ninety nine comic. It's qu quick action, as if there, it's not bad. I'd give it a, give it a 3.75. I enjoyed nice. that one, too. Nice. All right. Uh, next up, we got World Tree number one. And uh, you're not seeing that wrong uh, on the scroll there. That is how it's spelt because I guess they're using some sort of like computer numerics or, <laughs> you know, how people like to have like fancy uh, screen names and, you know, as their logins and stuff like that on video games. So like you got the zero as a, as an O and uh, threes as the E's in that name there. But this is the new uh, horror release from James Tynan, uh, the, f the fourth, um, through image comics it was supposed to come out a couple weeks ago then i mean it did i guess in some spots depending if your comic shop put them out but there was some printing error i guess like it came out really dark and some of the artwork so they ended up asking them to send it back to the publisher and then they released this issue two weeks later than originally planned so yeah this was uh i heard james uh, talk about the fact that this may have been like the, maybe like the darkest thing he's ever written which kind of has got me excited for it and I've never really got in the ground uh, on the ground floor for any of his ongoing series. I feel like it was always like me finding out about them after they got hyped up and were popular. So I was like, yeah, what the hell? I'll try this one out. So yeah, this is, this is pretty interesting so far. Basically it opens up with this, this girl, like you see a dead body there. It looks like she just killed somebody. And then she basically logs into this. She takes out her laptop you know, she happens to be naked here as well. So there's some sexy times in this. Although the person that they keep having that looks good, that's naked throughout this issue is like a fucking homicidal maniac that's killing people. So, it's a, you know what I mean? So it kind of like, you know, it's interesting in that sense. Like you're not really, you know, looking at her and like, ooh, like, you know, maybe for a second, but then you see her like, you know, killing people and you're like, okay, yeah, never mind. This chick's crazy. right? But, but, uh, but she logs into this thing called the Undernet which is basically like, I guess, a dark web of sorts, right? So she, and she's got like her whole screen name, this fear uh, screen name. And she basically accesses this thing called the undernet. And you see um, somebody basically also accessing this undernet and, and going around and like waving his phone in front of people. And then they kind of like glitch out in real life, kind of. It's weird. Like they, like something happens to them after he shows them like the undernet on his phone. And then he takes that opportunity to basically kill them. So you kind of see him going on this murdering spree and he's basically live streaming this. Like, I guess, like, I don't know, let's say like on Instagram or something like that. And to be for people to watch. And this kid, I guess, goes on some murdering spree and kills like a bunch of his neighbors in the course of the day. Meanwhile, you have this other guy who's basically going to visit his family with his now girlfriend. I guess they, they've been together for a bit now and she's the first time she's meeting his family. And they're talking, he's talking about his brother on the car ride up there. And she like, you know, he's like, yeah, I don't know. He seems like he's into some weird shit. And she's like, oh yeah, well, whatever. Like, you know, we were, we, we saw like a bunch of weird things on the internet when we were growing up too. And you know, whatever, what, what is he like, you know, like goth or something like that, you know, things like that. They're having this conversation and he's like, yeah, I don't know. And like, like she, and then he's, and then she goes to look him up online. Like, I guess it's like Instagram or whatever. And then she stumbles across this live stream of him killing people while they're on the way up there to meet him. So then the brother's like, what? like, she's like, pull over now. Like you, you got to see this. So by the time he comes to town, his brother's already wanted for this murder. The cops basically have already rounded him up. Right. While that's going on, you got this other story 
of I, essentially the creators, I guess, of this whole undernet thing to begin with. One guy's reaching out to another dude and saying, round up the rest of the people. It's gotten loose. Like, I guess this is something that they tried to bury some sort of thing they've created in the past. And now, like, they're worried about whether or not they can control this or shut it down. So I don't know if it's like some sort of access, like some sort of virus of some sort and maybe makes people crazy. But these guys are basically talking over the phone and he's like, come down here now. Like he's, he's like, I'll fly you out and we'll get the rest of the guys together and we'll, we'll have to try to figure this out. But I think it's too late. So yeah, the, it's really interesting. It's really got me interested. This debut issue has got a lot of questions coming out of this one. And then uh, at the end of the issue, you get this horrific scene of this chick busting into the cop, uh, the cop station where the kid is that got arrested. The guy went on the killing spree and, uh, yeah, again, she's like naked under the overalls. So like, you know, she comes in and, and, uh, she takes out a gun and she starts shooting all the cops and, and she basically finds this kid and, you know, she says something to him. Like he's like basically like a conduit of like whatever is going on and that she's aware of it. And she ends up basically like, dying at here at the end like it just overtakes him whatever the hell is going on like blood starts pouring out of his eyes and then the brother shows up here at this point too and she basically is like she shoots him in the fucking head in front of uh him and basically tells him that you you know you're welcome to join us type of thing and like struts out of there and she's naked too and she's doing this but like again she's a good looking chick but it's just like it's i don't know why the hell she's always naked like what's going on there but uh yeah and then at the end you get the guy like looking over his dead bro brother's body and he just pukes all over the fucking like jail cell so yeah it was a really great debut issue i'm you know i'm not as familiar with the artist on this fernando blanco i think he worked on some dc stuff with james when he was working for dc if i'm not mistaken maybe the jla dark i, I can't recall I, I i've seen his name somewhere but i didn't look at i think it was the jla dark stuff that he worked with him on so yeah Great, great first issue. I need to know more. I'm on board. I give this a four out of five. If you guys are into horror or if you're into James's work, uh, Tynan's work, definitely check this out. Really good start. You know if this is like one of his Substack reprints or is it uh, like a new, like a new title altogether? Yeah, I this I I believe this is a new title. Did not come out on the Substack previous. Okay. I'm pretty sure that's the case. Yeah, because I know he does a lot of stuff on the Substack, but I think that was in the form of a couple other things that came in, out through Image, like one called the yeah. Claws. And like something else, I think that came out from uh, them, but I be I don't think this was on Substack originally. I might be wrong about that, but I, I believe this is brand yeah. new for him because he does he does work for them still. Like he puts out uh he has another book that just wrapped up Department of Truth that he does with um uh yeah so he does he does stuff with Image as well. Uh, and then next up we got Strange Academy Finals number six. This is the final issue, at least of this version of Strange Academy with this creative team. You know, I, I, you know, moving forward, they kind of leave it open ended at the end and kind of say in the editorial at the end of the issue, it's possible that I think they said stay tuned. There might be an announcement in August. That could be that could mean a one shot or maybe a new series with a new creative team. Who knows? But um, this is good. I've liked this whole series. The one thing I'll say about this, this is uh, even with this finals uh, series, because they rebooted it and did six more issues of this one called finals as opposed to the first series. Uh, which they called like year one or whatever season one of strange Academy. Uh, I think it was about 24 issues all said and done written by Scotty young with uh, Umberto Ramos on art. And that was the art I think consistent through the series, which I think he did a great job on this series. Um, the only thing about that is it's one of those things where it's basically an ongoing story for 24 issues. They're not really doing smaller arcs. It's kind of like, especially here towards the end, like I would say there was a long stretch of issues where they're really just trying to tell one story with these group of characters. So whenever that happens, I feel like you run the risk of uh, of it getting boring at times just because like you, you're kind of expecting maybe some new threads in the storyline. And although they're giving them to you, it's really still working its way to the kind of the expected conclusion of, of of this villain or of these certain characters and what happens with that. Like, I kind of like smaller arcs usually, like in a lot of different stories, maybe all like intersecting together, kind of like a Seinfeld episode, you know? <laughs> like, I kind of I kind of more dig that kind of style as opposed to like, we're going to tell you 24, uh, 24 issue story. It depends, right? It depends on all the pacing, right? And personal preference of it. But, um, you know, because by the end of this, I was like, I was kind of, okay with this series ending like while i did enjoy my time with these characters 
and this concept and the whole magic academy aspect of it and the and actually having new characters um i was I, you know i had my fill i feel like the, at the end of the series if they relaunch it with a different creative team it would have to be like a really good one to get me i think reinvested in this that all being said if they came out with a collection of this like a, a nice hardcover collecting the whole thing i'd probably double dip and pick it up i think it was a solid story and i give it a 3.75 at the end of the day i thought it was good um just you know i lost my interest a little i think a little bit towards the end because I don't even think there was a point of rebooting it with this six issue final thing. You should have just ended the other series and called it a day. Like them kind of bringing this back made it, you know, made it seem almost like there was a purpose or a reason other than sales. But I think that was the only reason to be, to do that quite honestly, because uh, you know, I don't think this had anything else to offer that we couldn't have gotten by them wrapping it up in the main series. So uh, next up, you got captain America symbol of truth. Number 12, this is uh, the next chapter in this Cold War mini series. I guess it's coming out weekly. There are only like three or four issues left, I think, between these two series. It's not going to be a long event, it looks like. Um, and I don't know, Chris, did you see that Fallen Friend um, preview thing going around? Like they're, they're yeah, but, I but there's no but there's no context to what the Fallen Friend is. I know. So I'm really on the fence about pre-ordering it or not. They may fucking get me because I might have to pre-order it that apparently just to get it i'm probably gonna pre-order it i heard it could be mary jane dying now maybe it's bucky dying right there was rumors about it being bucky that's why i was like maybe but you're right they haven't even said if it has to do with captain america they're apparently not going to release that info until the end of may which pre-orders yeah. already be gone past at that point so i'm like they're really getting us on this one i feel like but i almost don't want to miss out so i'm like ah these fuckers are gonna get me with this fallen friend right yeah but uh but that's a rumor that it may be bucky because the original fallen friend had to do with the death i think of captain america or something like that during that time um you know so i rb silva is the artist on this issue though of this series Man, I fucking miss him on X-Men. This art is fantastic in this issue. Like, it is a great, great looking issue. As far as another chapter in this event goes, and this is the Sam Wilson Captain America series, which I haven't read previous to this. It was fine. I mean, I it, it doesn't it didn't really get my juices going all too much. Uh, I think this is, you know, but the art. The art, the RB Silver art was amazing. Like, I, I, you know, but basically, yeah, those creatures that we kind of from that other world or whatever, Dimension Z, attack them in this. And then you get a moment with Bucky talking to Captain America's son, um, basically the, the, the guy from uh, Dimension Z that they got him out of there that he had with Sharon, I think, when they were both stuck there. And he talks to him in this issue and he's trying to get inside of his head. And it's still kind of unclear whether or not he's actually fully working as a bad guy now. And this issue, again, it looks like he is, but he's still telling Sam in this, like he still has hope that he's holding out hope for the fact that Bucky is still, you know, he's basically just a, uh, you know, a double agent type deal type thing going on here. He, he believes in him still, but it's not looking so hot for him, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's basically the crux of this issue. I gave this, I'll give it. Oh yeah. And black widow shows up at the end with a knife to Bucky's throat. And if you know about their history together, they have a lot of history together. So that should be interesting where that goes. Uh, that was the most interesting thing I think that happened in the issue. And I, I will probably go into the other, the main Sam Wilson, no, sorry. Uh, Captain America, Steve Rogers series. I would think next week uh, for the, uh, for this event. Um, I gave this, I'll give it a 3.75 for the art. If it was just based on story, I would probably give it a little less, like a 3.5, but the RB Silva art, he used to be an artist on X-Men. I wish he was still doing X-Men stuff because it looked amazing, the, this issue. So, yeah, really good stuff. Chris, Vanish number six. Vanish number yeah. six. There we go. You got the other cover, I think, right? I got I don't know. This must be the A cover. I don't think I ordered a, a special cover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got the I got the Daniel Warren Johnson one, the B cover or whatever. I don't know. I was, when you're looking through the like on the first page, there is it say story by Ryan Stegman too now? I didn't catch that. Let me look. Like you know, it's a no. story. Or... Okay. Well, I think... it's a... It says story and pencils by Ryan Stegman, but he's always been a co-creator with Donnie Cates on this one. But yeah, it does say. Well, I don't know if that's a sign of. Uh, of I know I'm getting worried they might be pulling a freaking Hulk on us here. It's still 
But uh, as for the story itself, though, yeah, it still says Donny Kate's story on it as well, though. But you're right, it's with both of them. But I, that may have always been the case with these two on this series. I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I look at an old issue, but. But uh, yeah, this issue here, I don't know. I, it didn't really tickle my fancy this week. I know the last time, the last issue I thought was a great issue, I think. And this one here gets some, some big stuff going on that uh, I guess you find out it's been his girlfriend that's been protecting him. Yeah. You know, and as for, I don't even know what the main character's name is, whatever, Vanish. They leave him in a freaking really bad spot or a bad place. It's hard to feel feel anything for this guy here. Yes. And I guess the only good thing is that Robin or that Damian Wayne character got turned into a toad. And then he just flicks him off his shoulder and stomps on him. I thought that was a good scene. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but I'm, still, uh, I'm still looking forward to reading more of what's going on here. But I don't know. It's getting kind of lost in the politics. I, here, I think maybe. it was interesting that they abandoned the idea of that whole mental institution so quick. Because remember, there was that whole thing with last issue. We didn't know if it was real or not. And now it seems like. It was real in the yeah. sense he got taken to one because the woman here, I guess. Yeah, they do reference that he was, you know, she should go back right. to the back to the, the asylum or whatever. But, but I what know. I got from that was basically they he went there and they just thought he was crazy. And what he's actually going on about is has been all real, but but she then kind of urged him to go back to the mental institution because he could probably get some help there. Right. So, or what, you know what I mean? So I don't know. I don't know if that's the case or not. That wasn't very explained very well. And the fact that they didn't really touch on it since last issue, I thought that was kind of surprising, but I, I think you're right in the sense that the, uh, for me, the best part of this issue was, was this whole thing about learning her part in his life and kind of how she's been, uh, taking care of this guy because he's a mess. You know what I mean? Like he's such an irreprehensible irre yeah. even being. Like you're right. It's kind of he's kind of not a great guy, and he's got issues. This guy. So I mean, like it's it's hard to get get on board. And uh, she basically is forced out of this marriage or, uh, at the end here. And looks like she's trying to protect their child. I think it's alluded to that she has a kid at the end of this inner belly, yeah. basically pregnant or something right now. Which I don't know if they touched on that earlier, but. She was, uh, she's, you know, she was clearly like trying to get away from him at the end of this. And he was like, please like, don't go. And she's like, nah, I can't get involved with this shit again. Like you're going down a dark path kind of thing. Right. And yeah. Yeah. You know, so, and I know at the start of this series, they had, um, touched on the fact that he abused drugs and alcohol and shit like that. So I, I don't know, like they haven't really, again, talked about that too much since then, I feel like, but I'm still invested, but I hear you. I don't think this was the best issue either, but that was probably the most interesting part about the issue was her relationship um, with him. Like kind of, you, you, you learn a little bit more about that in this issue. So. Yeah. I think they kind of started out this almost being like a straight up superhero type of comic. And now they're kind of switching the path, which is still good. You know, you don't want everything to be the same, but uh, yeah, I, I am interested to see how this goes. I'll still keep on reading us for sure. Yeah. So what'd you give this one? Mm -hmm. All right, give it a three point five. The last, the last page here was uh, pretty interesting. This person showing up with these fucking guns, like very spawn looking kind of to me. Yeah, that's <laughs> uh, some beta or something. Yeah, some other person that uh, yeah they kind of made go after him here. I uh, I give it three point seven five out of five. Uh, Stegman art still looks great on it, though. I'll say that much. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. That's yeah. Great. Hulk number 14, Chris, the conclusion of the previously written and created, uh, or sorry, written, uh, oh, is that a Titan cover? Let's take a look at that. Nice. Yeah, it's a Nick Klein. Nice. This is a nice one. I like the cover. Yeah. Yeah. The previously written Donny Cates book until he, I guess he abandoned it a few issues ago. And uh, Ryan Otley has, uh, has uh, concluded the series now, uh, the artist and writer now of the series uh, here. It's the end of, end of this Hulk and, uh, like Chris said, that Nick Klein's actually going to be the artist on the new Hulk that launches, I guess, a month from now or whatever. What did you think of this ending? Yeah, I don't know about this ending either, man. Freaking a lot of weird stuff going on that's yeah. over my head again, you know. I don't know. I guess, you know, it's nice to see the kind of the Hulk. I did like seeing when the Hulk kind of fought back against Titan. And it seemed to be more like the the Hulk that we know and love, you know, where he just, you know, he just kind of speaks in you know, short phrases, it's no Hulk, so I won't cage me, and just rah, does all that sort of stuff. 
But then at the end with with these Hulk planet characters, I still can't get a hold of them. Seem pretty powerful though. And where they kind of fit into everything, I don't know. And I don't know, stuff with Doc Samson, I don't know what that's about. And where he's at at the end of this, I don't I don't I don't really don't know. Yeah, it was fine. That's all I can say. I think Ryan Otley looked great as usual in this. And I did like there was some good action fight sequences here between him and Titan at the end. But um, I did like the docs. I did like at the end how Doc Samson basically has turned back into like a green Sasquatch guy. Like he he um, he kind of references the fact that he went back to the planet of the Hulks after and like he writes him a letter after like when he gets I guess back to himself, at least as Bruce Banner. And he's kind of like living his life again. He like leaves a note for him and tells him that, you know, yeah. Hey, I'm, I, I went yeah, back. Was it, Strange Academy or something too, for a while there where he wakes up, he woke up in strange Academy. So I kind of liked the inclusion of that. I also liked doc Samson saying that he went back there to like, he stayed there to help the Hulk planet essentially. And, uh, and then Hulk, you know, went back there and he's like, He's watching one of those uh those baseball games that they have there, Doom Ball, whatever the fuck they call it. I don't know they yeah. called it, but yeah, like, that was interesting, I thought. And yeah, it was fine. It was this this issue was this. I mean, they, I'm glad they wrapped this up and we have a chance to like yeah. start a new series that could potentially be good as a result. But you know, I felt like this they've basically uh, you know, they stumbled to the finish line here a little bit towards the end of this series. It, you know, it lost its main writer halfway through and it's it, the fact that they were able to wrap it up to in any sense of the word and like, you know what I mean? Like making it decent, like, it's hard. It's hard. Right. So lost its legs halfway through, but what, what did you give this then? Yeah. Like I'm wondering if this was the plan that Donnie Cates had for it when this, when he was taking this over or when he was starting this, or did he have like a whole other, you know, freaking path that that was going to go the down thing that, what was the? Th i would think maybe this was his plan for it uh, but i don't know uh what was this thing at the end though too like the eye of titan or something fell out and like some other creature like came out from like a portal and like grabbed it what was that all about? yeah they, i don't know like in hulk psyche again or bruce banner's psyche yeah because they basically banished the titan or something or i don't know what they did and then this i don't know if that's like the it was like a brain or something i'm not it's that brain old guy or I don't know. His eye. I don't know. Like you said, it wasn't that clear. I don't. Uh, I guess they probably left it ambiguous on purpose, but I don't yeah. know. I don't really care too much for it. And like I say, I'm glad it's over. What'd you give it? I give it a three point five. Yeah, that's pretty just because that cover's sick. <laughs> yeah, I give it a three point five. All right, Harley Quinn twenty nine, Chris. That my issue here. Yeah, got the same one. Nice. A little worried when this uh when they had the new artist come in there. I thought the last issue was a little bit hulky, and then you know, starting out here, I thought it was gonna be more of the same. But thankfully, uh I think uh things turned around in this issue. I thought this this I thought this is one of the best Harley issues I've read in a long time. Wow. Where they use Harley perfectly here. You know, where they have her, you know, talking to Zatanna or that or even just the moments with with uh, Batman and, and Harley Quinn. I thought that was like just the perfect time, you know, just the perfect conversation. You know, they don't meet up and fight. They're just kind of talking to each other and and just the kind of like, you know, the lines back and forth between them. You know, he, he buys them with a, a black coffee and a dark, dark chocolate donut. Yeah. Kind of makes comments about that. And then, you know, just some of the lines where he's like, oh, you know, you really are the world's greatest detective. <laughs> to, you know, we're not just joking, and he's like, "What?" <laughs> and I know I just thought it was a good Harley issue. I really liked it. And I thought I think the art really matches the tone of this story. Yes, and that uh, gets me hope for the next I, issue. I, where the first one, I thought, "Oh man, I couldn't wait for that arc to end." Yeah, almost. that may have just been a bad debut issue because I guess they had to like cover a lot of ground and like you know what I mean, like to, like set up a lot of shit, but. I'm with you. I do think this was uh, thankfully a step in the right direction after the first issue. I think it was as much better than the first issue. I even kind of like this whole thing that these aliens or whatever trying to make themselves look like her ch she does at the end there, like, or whatever they are. Yeah. Like, was it alien? I can't remember. Whatever these things are that showed up, they're trying to yeah, make whatever themselves look like her. And even I also, uh, the second story. That's what I was just about to say. Right, I was delighted to see this. 
the backup story in this was written and drawn by Adam Warren, who I'm a huge fan of. I love this guy's art. He's kind of like a very manga influenced artist. And uh, he does a comic called Empowered, which is kind of it's about a uh, woman who, you know, it's kind of like TNA heavy as well. But like she has a suit that when when it rips the, apart the suit, she gets more powerful. <laughs> so like so like she's got but I have all of the books that he's done of that, that character through Dark Horse Comics, like the actual graphic novels. And uh, I'm a huge fan of his art. He's very manga style kind of influence, like, like a style, like, uh, you know what I mean? So seeing him on a big two book like this and on Harley of all places, I was really happy to see him show up here, man. I, I dig his art a lot. Yeah. I love, I love this backup story too. Yeah. Well, maybe not the story, but just the whole vibe of this, you know, I thought the story is kind of baloney, but just, just the art, you know, reminds me of almost like that Harry Crumb, that sixties style of art, you know, like the Robert Crumb. Yeah. Uh, you know, and uh yeah robert crumb sorry and you know just the stuff with harley's shirt every time you see it there's always sort of a different little saying on there i thought that's a nice touch and i thought that was good you know i was a surprise to have actually a decent story yeah no i liked it a lot i uh again yeah well that was a, that just came as a surprise to me because i was not expecting it seems like both issues they've had interesting artists on in the backups right i'd still do stand by the fact that i don't think this should be on matte paper though the art pops when you read this digitally more so than it does in the actual physical issue i will say like seeing the preview art that we're showing right here i think does um, it does a disservice this paper to this artist and this artwork like it it's more colorful i feel like if you read it digitally which i think this this yeah right but yeah yeah so there you go i'm glad we're both glad about that one because that first issue you know this definitely righted the ship a little bit in that sense would you so what'd you give this one i guess a 4.5 wow wow 3.75 for me i i liked it but not as much as you there you go we're all we're not on the same page at all here today folks interesting interesting week <laughs> all right the ambassador is number three chris travis charade yeah i gave it a quick read Pardon me. I said Travis Charay on artwork, a guy that hasn't, I feel like, did any interiors, like I said last episode, like in like 10 years or something. So this, I guess, was a big deal for a lot of folks that are a fan of this guy's artwork because he hasn't drawn, I feel like, in forever. So uh, at least uh, anything public. Yeah, I'm not bad. All, this, all these artists, uh, these special guest artists here kind of go over my head. You know, I thought the art was decent, nothing special. The story's okay, but it's... I don't know. It's getting more of the same here. Uh, something's got to be happening in this uh, this ambassador series. I guess there's only a few issues left. You know, it's nice seeing the French hero and uh, her son there, but I don't know. Nothing too crazy. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of the Travis Trey. Like, I didn't like grow up with his stuff. I guess through the '90s, like some people who are huge fans of his. But I think he's a good artist. I mean, this looked really great to me. It's definitely more. Yeah, I think it's good. Yeah definitely more like photo real like definitely looks more real world like the art like photorealistic type shit like you know what i mean like real looking people and stuff like that which i really dug and you know him trying to do this whole superhero stuff i think it looked really interesting in that sense because it did feel kind of a little bit more grounded in that sense so i was a fan of the art um i'm a few minds on this um i kind of feel like this is a mini series it's not like they can really get into Again, the reasonings, I find it hard to believe that some of these people have been the candidates to be these superheroes that are winning these. Yeah. But then in the same sense, it's kind of wholesome to think, hey, this person, I, you know what, I, this person did a good deed or, hey, your, your son wrote me a, le a le nice letter and like little things like that are what is driving her decisions. It just seems odd because you would think if these they're going to give away, they make such a big deal about how important these powers are and like how big of a deal it is if you get chosen yet the people that have been chosen so far like have done like little nice acts like you know what i mean like obviously the guys yeah like they're not like super people like they're just they're just random decent people but they're a dime a dozen i'm sure like they probably got a thousand of these sort of same stories so that's how i'm kind of two minds on this because at the end of the day like it is kind of nice and wholesome to think hey this 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 single mother who which is a, a situation a lot of people have been in had a son who really cared for her and he sent you find out that he sent a letter and kind of you know and then she sent something not knowing that the son sent something trying to be like you know i need to do this for my son he's like hey my mother's a good person can you please do it so like 
that's what I mean. It, it is nice that he's kind of picking like, but it also seems like very like they make such a big deal of this. And then like the people that are getting the powers, I'm like, is that really the most qualified person to get these powers? Right. Like, I don't know. But, and then like, well, who knows? Maybe at the end of this, you'll find out that there's some, like nothing's ever random or, you know, there's some reason that all these people were selected, but who knows? I also have a, uh, here's my theory of this, Chris, is that the person who shows up at the end of this issue that basically, and there's like some bad guy, like in the shadows in this scene, as you can see here, I don't know, yeah. I don't know what's going on with that. But again, at the end of this, the woman, I guess in her everyday job as like a, like a, a citizen or whatever, she, she gets the, the people show up that showed up in the last issue with the other guy. Um, trying to say like hey are you so and so and it seems like they're trying to like you know uh, get in the way of this whole operation whatever this uh asian woman is uh the, the korean one or whatever she is yeah. that's basically putting together this super team right i almost feel like that's like a willy wonka-esque type of setup where they're trying to see if these people are actually good people or are they actually going to go behind their back and try to fuck this person over like i i feel like that's a test personally I don't, I don't yeah. know if that's the case or not. I guess we'll find out. Maybe, yeah. Um, but that's kind of how I took that. And this was kind of interesting. The kid had a gun here at the end for some reason, which I don't know what that's about either. Like, there's definitely some other interesting things happening. I well, don't know I thought what... earlier, you know, he was writing all these stories about how he's going to kill all his classmates. And then right. he was telling his mom that, you know, oh, it was just stories to get me through the day. And maybe he was actually thinking about this until, you know, they got their superpowers. And I'm mean, one other thing too. I'm getting tired of all this. You know, when they gotta switch out their superpowers and they gotta call it out, oh, I'm gonna take the the stunt driving. You know, I got the three choices, stunt driving and uh, I don't know, mathematician and blah blah blah. Yeah, enough of that. Yeah, no, I know. It's 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 interesting that they don't just have one power set. They can basically create any power set with their powers, like uh, that from this uh, facility, right? So yeah. Uh, so what'd you give yeah. this one? I give it a I give it three point seven five. I thought it's good. Oh, sorry, but what was the rating? Great. I missed it there. Dang, three point seven five for me as well. Uh, but I like the pace. This is coming out every two weeks. You get different artists. Yeah, so I'll stick yep. with it. Uh, Doctor Strange number two. Got a couple books here that I read this week. Uh, I'm saddened to say this was not as good as the debut issue. Um, this just fine, you know, this just felt like your basic everyday kind of Doctor Strange type story in this one. It was cool because Moon Knight showed up again, and you know, Jed McKay writes the Moon Knight series, and he also showed up in the Strange series with Clea. So they kind of like reference that and how they're friends now in this, and how Doctor Strange hates him. So, <laughs> like, I, I thought that was interesting. So Moon Knight shows up and he tries to get Doctor Strange to help, like, I guess a kid from his neighborhood. You know, how, like people go to Moon Knight, go to his like, uh, pro like in, you know, his is he set up shop essentially, like where people can go with their problems, supernatural issues within his neighborhood. And uh, in that book that Jim McKee writes. So in this, like he comes to him and apparently I guess these, uh, these people came to him and said that their son is having some issues and you know, it, it's uh, he is being troubled by nightmares. So of course, Dr. Strange, you think, okay, well that's nightmare then. So then they go into the recesses of his mind. It goes into his head, finds that nightmares there, but nightmare, even though he, they, they come across him, it seems that he's not the one that's doing whatever is troubling to the kid. Like he's actually prisoner in his own realm. Like he's, uh, he's like tied up against like a, like a tree or a wall or something in the, in the, in, the, in his uh, nightmare, like a uh, realm. And he's got like some like uh, things going through him, like sharp, uh, I don't know, like thorns of some sort. And he's like, you know, Steven, you know, please like, let me go. Like I'll do whatever. Like, it seems like he's under the impression that Dr. Strange is the one that sent him up in the, like t in this scenario. And he's being tortured by him. And he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. It wasn't me. And yeah, I don't know. It's kind of weird. Like I, I, they're really trying to make you seem like by the end of this issue that Clea, there's some sort of stuff going on with Clea. Like she's the bad guy and all this, but I think it's just somebody working in the shadows. That's like, coming across the, you know, trying to mess with their lives or something right now. Anyways, he takes down whatever this, this thing was that was troubling the kid inside of him and fight some sort of like, I don't know, like demon or something. I don't know what it was. And basically at the end of this though, we get the follow-up to last issue with Wong showing up 
and basically saying, uh, hey, uh, we found the dead body of Agamemnon or whatever his name is. I think that's like somebody from like, Lord of the Rings or something's name. I can't remember his name. But he's like, yeah, this guy, we found the body of him and uh, the dude that died in the first issue that they had trouble with. And then like you see him like in the panel, like looking at yeah. Clea, like with the side eyes. Like, oh, I don't know what's going on there. Right. I think he suspects him, which is kind of what I expected from this story. So I love the art. Good. The story is just okay though in this issue i give it a uh, i give it 3.75 still though it was fine but it wasn't as good as the first issue which i was really got me really hyped for this series and then this one was just like ah whatever uh next up we got ka number seven uh this was a great issue I really enjoy this series really love uh uh wes craig's art of course and uh he's writing a really crazy fun fantasy type series here man like in this issue like now that the uh the Kea girl the one with the metal arm that's kind of been uh you know hanging out with these lizard people warrior people uh, her and the her brother were separated he got taken away but at the end of the last issue and now they're basically trying to make their way through this whole new i guess land this new area that uh with some villains uh you know fighting their way to make to get her brother back essentially and along the journey a lot of sh crazy shit happens they get attacked by some stuff in like a sewer and she has to go through like this like dark area and like she comes out the other side like through this like pipeline essentially and then she they they barely make it, their way out of there and then they open it up and you get this this great splash page of this this whole new world that they've kind of the region in this in this land that they've come across which and then you get, and then you cut to the 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 her brother basically that's being dragged as like a like a hostage essentially by these bad guys. So like really creative, great fantasy, great looking creatures, fun art, fun story. Yeah, it's it, I really like this one. I gave this a four, and it's it's been a. I think the series just keeps getting better and better. And then at the end of the issue, you come across this, you know, this big crazy looking dude which i guess we'll find out more about him but he, you know it, it, he apparently i guess knows of Kaya, his sister and i guess that's why he's holding him hostage for whatever reason so and then you got last ronin teenage mutant ninja turtles last ronin uh, lost years number three uh this is the last issue i've pre-ordered i think there's five or six of these but i dropped this i'm just I was trying to make cuts and like, this is one that I think is just going to read better in a chunk. And I'm going to buy the hardcover for the series anyways, as a companion to the other last Ronin hardcover I have like the main series. So I'm just like, uh, you know, I'm just going to drop this for now. So, uh, here's the problem with this series. This is good, but they're trying to do too much in this mini series. Not only are they telling you a present day storyline of April and Neil after the events of the first last Ronin series with the turtles dead. And now she's kind of taking care of these new baby turtles. Like they're basically, I guess, uh, they're they, the new baby turtles, the new Ninja turtles that I guess are going to be the new ones moving forward, but they're all like kids at this point in time. Um, you know, so they're, they're living with these kids and telling them stories about their past and their, their times with the turtles when they were all alive. So they're telling a present day storyline. They're also telling uh, like almost like two past storylines at the same time. There's just too many stories happening all at once in this issue. And like each issue you have to, you only get portions of the story of each story along the way. So I just think it's going to be one of those things that reads better altogether issue by issue. I don't, I just don't feel it works. It's, it's, you know, it, it's, it's at least not for me. So and the artist is not as good as the, on this series as it was in the first original last run in series, unfortunately. So I give this, uh, I give this a 3.5. It's fine, but I, I, I look forward to kind of checking out the whole series again in one, uh, one hardcover. All right, Chris, local man number three next up here. Yeah, I think you turned me on to this story. And I read this one. This one wasn't my favorite issue either. I think the base, probably the, the follow up or the second story, kind of enjoyed a bit more than this one here. Because once again, it's a lot of stuff between characters with histories. I, I have no idea what's going on. And I don't know. I don't feel, feel this comic really moved the story along too much. I uh, know. What do you think of this one? Maybe you have a better. No, grip on I, it. Yeah. I mean, I, I think I liked it more than you did. I, I actually really enjoyed this issue. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't think it moved it forward all too much that he's investigating the, uh, the death of his friend there. That was also like a villain that lived in this town, but I guess you do learn that he had more issues than like, I guess he knew of. And 
he comes across another villain that has like some sort of demon in her palm. And I guess she tells him about how they were all part of like, I guess like a, like an AA type of meeting type of thing. And, and um, it looks like whoever's coming after him, you know, she gets taken out this issue. So like, there's definitely someone gunning for this guy, the cross Jack or whatever his name is. And um, you know, I, I, I don't know. I just think it is an interesting story. I think it's building. And uh, I think the last issue kind of hooked me and kind of got me invested in this storyline now. So I'm trying to, you know, I'm, I'm still interested to read more, but um, that was the biggest takeaway from this issue. Oh yeah. And he kisses his old, uh, old girlfriend here who's married and that didn't turn out so well. She's like, you know, what the hell are you doing? But they have like a moment where he kind of goes in for that and uh, thinks it's a thing. I thought this was interesting how like in their headquarters, like this justice league of this world or whatever, the, you got the guy, the biblical dude, that's like basically carrying the cross. Like it's training. Training. He's training. That's his training, isn't it? Yeah. I thought that was really funny. I thought like, Oh, that's interesting. And the names that they have for each other are like ridiculous. Yeah. yeah I, I thought that was, I kind of think we need I to see- like that part there. He's Carrying the cross, and then her name is Softcore. I think we need to see more of that kind of stuff in this, uh, honestly. So I, I, you know, which yeah. it looks like we're going to get more, but he's not too happy about finding out about this local man. I guess that's why it's called that, because in the paper it says "local man saved priest," right? About him, but and yeah, he, yeah, that was I a good part. So there was some good too. stuff in here still, and yeah, this- I still enjoy I, the series, though it's good. I agree. I that was really probably like the, the strongest one still. And we did get a little bit of a backup story flashback of him back in his like days with this Justice League or whatever, right? And and the art is by yeah, a different artist and it kind of makes it look like 90s image type of style art. So I kind of dug that as well. So uh, so what'd you give this one? I'll pump it up to a 3.75. Yeah, 3.75. Yeah, I had a couple good scenes in it. And I'm still going to continue reading it. Uh, clobbering time number two. Chris, you checked this one out, you said? Yeah, I gave it a quick read there. We got a thing and and, and it's, I guess that's a new watcher because he comes out with a different name, but I you know I thought it's a fun read. I've, nothing really stuck to me as what goes on in this comic. I just kind of read it quickly. But you know, it's a good time and it's I don't think it's a waste of time to read. And I'll follow through the next few issues. They're all oh, some of the stuff here. There, they really give it to the the thing there in that interview. I know who's writing this, but whoa, man, alive! Yeah, I was kind of annoyed. Yeah. I was kind of annoyed by this scene. I get what he where he's going with this, but he basically gets like some Gen Z person, like so. Basically, the, yeah. I, I, it's really the writer artist of this series. It seems like commenting on how critical people are these days of one another because she really t- gives it to him. Uh, he's giving like a, 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 like a talk in Krakoa and she really, yeah, starts judging, yeah she starts judging the thing hard here. And uh, yeah, and he's like, Oh yeah, we're both rocks. You know, am I right? And he's like, no, you know, you're wrong. <laughs> so I think that just annoyed me because of how true to real life. I'm like, oh, I can see yeah. that. <laughs> I was like, my, I I think good on the writer to actually tap into that, but at the same time, it, it annoyed me because I was just like, oh god, I'm like I kind of I just want to see this guy punch some people. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> yeah, and then when he starts kind of just going into the uh, the proper speaking, you know, he's like, oh, why, 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 well, you know, then you know, just dropping all those lines there, you know, you go, what's going on there? I thought something was up. I did, like- and it just turns out it's uh, yeah, it's he's true. got an earpiece or something. Reed gave him something that makes him sound all like uh, smart. Yeah. <laughs> I thought yeah, that was awesome. PR yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> but the stuff with Wolverine, you know, I didn't, uh, I didn't find that too overwhelming or interesting. Unfortunately. I did like when he got blasted and he's basically all metal and panty and mm. their whole body. It was just like, just blown right off. Uh, yeah. I, and I liked how the bad guy separated the thing. Like, stretched his like skin off of it that visually yeah. that was gross looking i was like Ugh, right? <laughs> i was like that's kind of nasty gnarly looking here so yeah you know it is what it is it is basically marvel 2 and 1 i guess in a modern sense i do dig the art a lot and you know this villain i guess who we i guess that's the only through line from the first issue he kind of we didn't really know who the villain was in the first issue but he was alluded to 
And, uh, and he kind of, in this one, I guess we get to know who this guy is. Like he's this dude that can transform into this guy, but he, he's got no nose. He's got like a metal nose. I don't know what's going on. And he's just, like weird looking dude. Right. So I think he's yeah. just someone they made up for this comic. I've never seen him before. So yeah, this is Logan there getting, uh, <laughs> oh yeah. And then in the end you find out that he's basically traveling around and collecting pieces to make some sort of like big bomb or something in his like in his dimension or something. I guess that's what the dude's been up to, but it was fine. Uh, but like you said, it's, it, you know, it is a light read and, and it's, and it's only a five issue mini series. So I, I'm going to stick with it. I I've been having fun with it, but it's nothing. Oh, yeah, it's a fun read. Yeah. Uh, next issue is Dr. Strange. Uh, and that, so yeah, it's Marvel two in one styles. So he teams up with uh, Dr. Strange next one. What'd you give this one? I got a 3.5 fun read, quick read. All good. I got a 3.75 on this one. Uh, next up, Invincible Iron Man number five. Oof. This is a comic I wish I bought for sure. I wish I had been following this whole series. There's good. some big stuff going on in this one. It's great, that this one. Yeah. And, uh, just, you know, I always, it's, I've always felt it was the tired trope where, you know, Iron Man or Tony Stark loses his com company and blah, 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 you know, whatever. But he fights to get it back. But with this one here, you know, just have him going to Krakoa there, you know, talk with uh, White, whatever, Emma Frost, thought that was all great. And then what this guy's doing with us, the guy that took over the company, is that, uh, is that Fei Long or something? I'm not sure what his name is. Fei Long, yeah, Fei Long, yeah. And uh, just what he's doing with all the stuff and all the stuff he's finding out, I think it's freaking super awesome. Uh, you know, this might be one comic I might try and track down and buy. I thought this one was great as well. You know, we get the Tony Stark stuff or the Howard Stark stuff, and the ending. I don't know if you want to talk about that with uh, with the what he finds or what they're building. I think that's going to play a big role in things coming along. Yeah, there it is. Freaking Iron Man yeah. Sentinel. The Iron Man Sentinels, uh, for sure, pretty awesome. Like that's oh. a really interesting storyline going on there. And if I am talking over you there for Chris for a moment, my apologies. Just uh, I've been experiencing some lag throughout the episode on my end, so uh, uh, sometimes it's hard to tell whether or not you're still talking when you lag out there. So. <laughs> uh but yeah hopefully it's coming out okay for you guys if not our apologies it happens sometimes unfortunately but uh yeah no the iron man sentinels thing is really interesting and like you said it's a really interesting story that's being built up here and uh i you know i'm i'm in it for more i can't wait to the next issue it looks like they're gonna do a throwback story of him during the west coast avengers era which is kind of cool though so i'm like okay i used to uh, you know i used to read west coast avengers back in the day when i was younger when you would just pick up random issues of shit uh so i, I think that's kind of interesting we'll see what happens there but uh i missed the boat on this one too i didn't pick this up in physical issues either but i did pre-order the first volume of the trade so i'm gonna be i'm gonna be nope. picking up the trade uh since i've been reading online but i think this is something i want on my shelf because this has been a pretty solid iron man series so far so yeah good stuff for sure and uh, interesting things to come and i like how jerry duggan who's also writing the x-men is tying this into some of his x-men stuff that's going on it seems like as well right so it's it's good enough well, right, i've seen some of the covers for x-men i think those uh, iron man sentinels play into the this fall of x somehow there you go there you go so what'd you give this one i got a 4.25 you got a four out of five yeah i'm liking it uh next up we got thor 33 chris your favorite writer uh Tora and grunbeck <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. I only think I got a nice Alex Ross cover here. Yeah, nice one. But unfortunately, this just looks like some guy in a freaking costume. Yeah. Like, I don't know if that, uh, that plays on his skill or his lack of skill as an artist. Like, usually they look like heroes, but this, this looks like some guy off the street wearing a freaking mascot costume. But it's still awesome. But as for the issue itself, this I still feel this should be awesome, but it's just not. Yeah. Like this stuff here in the beginning with uh, with Thanos sort of in the, in the out in the wild, I thought that was okay. Maybe if the story was all that, you know, it was a Thanos story, that might be fine. But you know, they're kind of jumping back, and I know they reference Thor seeing something in the mirror that he shouldn't do, and it turns out being you know kind of almost ascending to a godhood or something like that. And you know, he starts getting corrupted by the power, but he he relinquishes it pretty quickly. And, you know, when Hera, when is it Hela that gets released and she doesn't do anything, I felt that didn't ring true at no. all. I don't know. 
No, I'm with but, you. I mean, yeah. I, I think we sound like a broken record at this point. But again, this has all the right ingredients. It's just not tasting that great to me. Like, I, I feel like yeah. it's got so many different elements to it where I think this comic should be kicking ass. But yet the story just seems very boring to me. I don't know. Like, I'm just not very interested in this one. And uh, I don't feel like she's getting better. I don't think she's gotten worse. But I feel it's just the same. I'm just not a fan. I figured that's what yeah, it is. It's more of the same. Um, it could be great and, uh, for whatever reason. I pre-ordered up till the end of this arc, which is two more issues from now, issue 35. And past that, I might have to drop this if she continues with the series. I just figured, you know, what the hell? I'm not going to drop off yeah, in the middle of the arc. That. But at the end of issue 35 in this list, as we just went over last week, they have an annual coming out and no issue that month. So that's either a sign of them rebooting the series and maybe they just haven't announced it yet or maybe it's a creative team change. I would hope it. I, I yeah, hope it's hopefully. the latter. I mean, I would. I'm happy to re continue reading Thor, but I also feel like unless somebody interesting comes in here, I'm gonna drop it for sure at the end of this arc. Just not. Good. It's not good anymore. And yeah. and like you know, I wish Donny Cates came back, but still no update on that guy. And he's kind of been off the radar for the like going on a year now. I feel like right, like in terms of uh, his yeah, I've been Marvel stuff, right? Uh, so, anyways, what'd you give this? Yeah, 3.5. Yeah, same. And lastly, we got Mary Jane and Black Cat number five, guys. This is the uh, the conclusion of the miniseries here. Yeah. Uh, what would you think of this, Chris? I think the story, it's a fun little story there. You know, I got a few swerves in there. Almost reminds me of like Ocean's Eleven or something like that, you know, where they kind of have a plan. And it seems the way it goes for the Black Cat stories in general. You know, when you read those trades, she always got some sort of trick up her sleeve. I think the art was great in this one and the you know not the trick was or the swerve was all super but it was nice seeing them freaking just go to town there for a bit with sims and the plan that they have there and the big takeaway at the it was the end of this story where she's just you know i guess they they're kind of i guess uh the What's the word I'm looking for? I guess there's there's no clouds in the air. They know both know that she's going out with Peter and or Black Cat is dating Peter and Mary Jane just wants to get back to her family. And when they bring it back there, she's all so happy that they're all back. I don't know if that's just pushing me towards that some bad things are, are coming for Mary Jane. Right. Yeah, it's possible. <laughs> I mean, they're they're taking every opportunity, I feel like, between this and like Amazing Spider-Man and all this to like really be like, hey, look, she's happy and she's got a family now and it's not with Peter. Yeah, I mean, you want them, you know, this isn't like, you know, when this first came out, everybody's thinking it's some sort of swerve or, you know, that there's, it's not a true or it's a clone. There's something up, but it seems to be, you know, this is the way it is. And they're really trying to push that vibe here at the end. And I don't know. And timing is everything, I guess. You know what, though? Like, the worst part about it all is, like, you know, she's done nothing wrong in this situation. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, she was left yeah. on, like, another planet for, like, I don't know how long. She fell in love with somebody. Like, you know, it sucks. But, like, you know, I guess she could have just waited in the hopes that knowing he's Spider-Man, that he would find a way to get her back. And I guess maybe that's why some people are, like, you know, thinking like she's a fucking home wrecker now or something. I don't know. It's just, it's interesting. Well, I don't feel bad for the home wrecker. I, you know, you don't want to see this happen. But if she is happy and and that's the way it plays out, it's it's tough this to is see. An awesome double page spread in this issue, though. I feel like. Uh, oh yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, when they're going to town, like when the true story kind of came yeah. out as to what they no, did. I dug it. I, you know, it was fun. It, you know, again, it didn't blow my socks off, but I think it was a fun series. Uh, you know, they told a nice little fun story. I think it falls in line with the tone of the other Jed McKay black hat stuff. And it also kind of helped advance the relationship between these two characters outside of the main Spider-Man series, which I thought was interesting in that sense. So I think it was worth it yeah. for those reasons, but otherwise, you know, you just got a, a fun kind of uh, adventure in hell or whatever, I guess for the two of them. And they end up uh, getting cl coming closer together there by the end of it. So, um, yeah. So what'd you give this one? I'll give it a 3.75. Like I said, nothing great, yeah. but still good stuff. You know, characters I love, like, I'll be down for whatever they yeah, do. Yeah, I also give it a 3.75. Good stuff. All right. Well, that's going to do it for their books this week, guys. Huge, huge week, as I said. And we're just going to quickly go over the solicitations for Image Comics of July 2023. Not too much to go on here. 
since we already ran long, we'll probably just highlight maybe some of the new books that are coming out to see if we're interested in any of these. Let me just bring this up here. All right, so we got the Image Comics solicitations uh, pulled up here. And uh, once again, as always, shout out to comicreleases.com that do a good job of compiling this stuff together. Uh, but something already caught Chris's eye here at the uh, at the start here out of the uh, single issue section here. Big game, uh, the new Mark Millar uh, miniseries coming up. Chris, what do you think of this? I've... I'm not sure what it's about, but I, I think it's a uh, nemesis is in there. Yes. Yeah. So uh, this is going to be a crossover of a lot of the series that he's done in the Miller world over in image comics for the past, I don't know, several years or whatever. He's long he's been doing it. So uh, it pulls together kick-ass Kingsman nemesis, the magic order and all the Miller world franchises in one special event. So that's a big, I don't know how he's going to work that out because this guy's done like, I feel like 20 different, He's done like 20 different I series, I think, like mini series at Image uh, over the years and a lot of a lot of good stuff there as well. But to ha actually have all these characters not only reference the fact that they're all within the same world, what I, which I feel they have a little bit. They have done a little bit, I think, in Kick-Ass. They connected the last Kick-Ass series to some other stuff that happened in one of his books. But um, to get them involved in some sort of event... It, I mean, and and if yep. you're gonna look at all his different books, uh, at least that come to mind from that he's done in Image, uh, I mean, the logical thing would be to make Nemesis the villain because he really hasn't done many books on centered around villains like that, right? So, uh, I mean, yeah. yeah, but I mean, he. I know these censored covers. I might be buying two or three yeah. of them. Who knows? Well, that's the thing, right? I mean, again, they're doing it. With you know, one thing. Could be a kick-ass cover one could be a nemesis cover one could be a a kingsman right. cover who knows and from what i've learned from that uh that spider-man uh censored cover maybe every time i see these censored covers i'm buying yeah. them yeah well so the only thing they've said about the this here is cover a as you can see it's a censor all of them it says pepe laraz drew that who's the artist of this series cover b is it's the black and white variant of that so if you're going to get the a cover maybe don't get the b because it's the black okay. and white variant. the one that's the most interesting out of all these though is c which says the forbidden cover by artists undisclosed so who the hell knows what that who's drawing that one that's interesting yeah. and then d you got frank quietly who did the first issue of ambassadors very recently um who's an amazing artist as well so yeah some good stuff and then e and f are to be announced which i guess you don't even know what those are going to be but but i gotta say if if anything, and I don't know if I'm going to pick up issues of this because I usually buy all this stuff in trade now. I might just read it online, but maybe just for this first issue, just to get one of the, get this forbidden cover, I might be interested in picking that up, right? So, yeah, maybe. you know, it's all hype though as well. But who knows? But it's, 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 I am going to be reading this though. That's for sure. Yeah. So we're going to definitely, the comics event of the summer is here. But again, if you're not really into Mark Miller's books, um, you know, or him as a writer, I think it'd be safe to pass on this one. But I don't, you know, hopefully he does a good job of introducing some of these characters that people may not be familiar with in this mini series event, though, in that sense as well. Right. So, but I think it's kind of cool that he's, these are all creator own characters that he's putting together and actually saying are like that. This is the first proper Miller worlds, even though he's been referencing all his books in that sense that that's coming out. So that's kind of cool. I really yeah. like it. it's ambitious. That's for sure. So, uh, then we got fish flies. Number one of six. This is the Jeff Lemire written and drawn series. Uh, that he's been putting out over his sub stack this past year. And I'm definitely picking this up. Um, this is one of six. I'm a big fan of Jeff Lemire and his small, smaller, like, you know, uh, slice of life, small town tale type shit that he does. And when he usually writes and draws it himself and they always, you know, take place a lot of them in Canada and shit like that. So I, I'm on board for this. I'm a fan of his stuff. Not everyone loves his art or is the type of stories he tells, but like, if it's something that he's writing and drawing, I always pick it up. So I'm, I'm looking forward to this and I haven't read this because I haven't, I didn't do his sub stack, but I look, this first debut issue is 64 pages for five 99. So it's worth the price of admission. I think they get a lot of pages of it and mini series that has uh, come out on, um, on sub stack previous to this. Uh, let's see what it says here. Uh, brings you a new tale of small town, yeah, surrealist horror in this special extra length debut issue. Oh, I didn't know it was a horror book though. When a brutal and violent crime puts the life of an innocent teenage boy in the balance, it sets off a chain of events in bu bucolic Bell River, Ontario, that were permanently changed several residents' lives. See, I didn't even read this. I knew it was going to take place in Canada. It would be a small town thing. 
<laughs> and as the manhunt heats up, a lonely girl named Franny Fox will form an unlikely friendship with a fugitive that leads them on an odyssey of discovery and redemption. That sounds good. And like you got a Peach Momoko variant yeah. here. How about you? That's nice. Interested in this? I'm uh, maybe read it online. Yeah. Uh, next up, you got Ant Antarctica number one uh, by Simon Burks and Willie Roberts. I'm not familiar with them, but series premiere Stargate meets his dark materials in a new nonstop sci-fi action blockbuster. Hannah's life imploded the day her father failed to return from the secretive Smith Peterson research station in Antarctica alone and on the street. She's at her lowest ebb when a friend offers help retrained as an engineer. Hannah secures a job at the same Antarctic station to search for her father and stumbles headfirst into a conspiracy that threatens everything she's ever believed. Sounds yeah. all right. Sounds all right. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not familiar with the creative team. So maybe me, you know, game time decision on that one, but sounds kind of interesting. Yeah. Pure evil. Number one of six written by Mirka and Dolphal and Laura Braga on art. Mirka and Dolphal is usually, she's written and drawn some things as well. She's a really good artist. This Laura Braga also is good. I've seen her on uh, uh, some other stuff as well in the past, but this doesn't sound too interesting to me. Rita loves her daughter dead, but a dark evil from her past threatens the lives of anyone who gets too close to it. Can the bond between two women overcome a life built on blood and lies and what secret is lurking in the Mirando family's apartment? Yeah. Uh, Scrapper, one of six. Looks like it's a dog book <laughs> in the future. <laughs> it looks like know, Fifth Element. Popular for whatever reason. Fifth Element with dogs, it looks like. I don't know. There's like a flying <laughs> car there. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, game design genius, Cliff Blazinski. Gears of War and Fortnite. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Okay. Uh, makes his comics debut with a critically acclaimed writer, Alex DeCampi. I'm familiar with him. And fan favorite artist, Sandy Jarrell. Not familiar with her Blade Runner style action mixes with big emotions as a stray dog yeah. scrapper. It looks like they're tapping into that stray dog's popularity. Uh, and his buddy yeah. Tank fight for justice against the totalitarian forces of a post apocalyptic dome city. Yeah, so it's it's Blade Runner with dogs. <laughs> okay, that's <laughs> I don't know actually. I might, I might check this out online. That kind of I don't know. That seems weird to me. That one Swan Songs number one. Uh, this looks like a horror book of some sort. Martin Simmons was the artist that was working on Department of Truth with James Tynan up until recently. Uh, I guess they're taking a break from that. Maxwell Prince, he also writes a lot of horror books. Ice Cream Man, yeah, and haha. -ha. He continues his weird winning one-shot formula with his all-new multi-artist project that explores the way things end and also how they never really do. Okay, so there you go. Swan, th Swan Songs comprises stories about endings, the end of the world, the end of a marriage, the end of a sentence, the end of the world. Yeah, so... Yeah, I don't know. This ends tonight, one of three. This is Jerry Duggan, who we're a fan of, uh, co-writing this. And Jay Lee on art, who I'm a huge fan of. Um, I might not pick this up in issues, but it's a three-issue miniseries. I'll probably check it out online for sure, just because I'm a fan of both of those guys. Um, but the, the premise of it doesn't sound too interesting. It says, in this issue, two sisters fight their way across Vegas in a savage race to save their lives. And that's it. Like So I'm like, that doesn't really yeah. sell me. Um, but I like the people involved in it. And so I might check it out online, that one. And then you got some, uh, it looks like a mini series now in the same world of, I hate fairy land. So that's spinning out into its own mini uh, series outside the main series. So that's interesting. I'm surprised they're going that far with that one. Uh, weird work. Number one of four. That one just looks weird. Uh, we don't have the preview art here. Look, lo lo uh, loaded up. It looks like, but yeah, that didn't sound too good to me. You get a reprint of Wanted Number One. Speaking of Mark Millar, if you never read that, that's a cool opportunity to check out uh, that book. It was a you know popular movie when it came out. Uh, Impact Winter, Arcade. Uh, now that we're just getting into the books that are just ongoing that we've kind of previously either are reading or talking about uh, already. So, so yeah. So there you have it. There's some yeah. of the new image releases. A couple things that are looking interesting there that we'll probably talk about here on the show. So, so there you have it. All right, Chris. Uh, next week, what are you looking forward to checking out? Well, I think I'm picking up uh, Edge of Spider-Verse number one, basically because of the cover. I think they got the that Spider T-Rex and a Venom T-Rex fighting on a cover. Immortal X-Men 11, Spider-Man 8, Batman 135, 
As for the stuff I'm reading online, I think there's a bunch of them out there. There's the Deadly Joe, or the Deadly Duos coming out with number seven. Looking forward to that. I think it's Poison Ivy, some DC stuff, maybe some other Marvel stuff. What about you? What are you getting? Uh, yeah, so I got my list here. Uh, definitely a smaller week, which is good. Um, I got uh, Batman 135, Batman Joker, Deadly Duo, the seven of seven. That's the conclusion of that series. I'm looking forward to that. Got a new series starting up, Peacemaker Tries Hard, number one of six, which I'm really looking forward to. That sounds like it's going to be really enjoyable and fun. Um, I'm looking forward to that release. And I'm also looking forward to Shazam, number one, written by Mark Wade and artist Dan Mora from the World's Finest team right, that we really enjoyed. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. That seems like it's going to be a lot of fun, too, Shazam, number one. Oh, that reminds me of a story, one of the comics I read I forgot to tell you about there, the Revenge of the Gods, I guess. When you mentioned Shazam, I think that leads into that Shazam number one. Okay. And I remember how I have, remember that Wonder Woman I thought was so great. Everything that was so great about that was all undone in this Revenge of the Gods part four of four. And the Lazarus pain, you know, she loses her Shazam powers. Mary Marvel gets them back, but it's not the Shazam, like, you know, how they, each letter stands for a different god. For Mary Marvel now, it's a bunch of all these female gods, I guess, mm -hmm. or goddesses. And, uh, yeah, that was just the downer. So that sucks. <laughs> you mention that. But, but it does lead into the Shazam because Shazam gets his powers back. And that, uh, that Shazam, I guess the old man that's in the cave or whatever. Yeah. He's, I guess Wizard. he's back on the side because in that Revenge of the Gods, he was, he was favoring, I guess, Hera and them. And then she, fi he finds that she's unworthy and blah, blah, blah. But anyways, go on. Sorry, you didn't mean to interrupt there. Oh, that's all right. No, I mean, that sounds interesting. I'm looking forward to that one just because I really like Mark Wade and Dan Moore has been doing great work. So the solicits made it sound like it's going to be a fun book. So, yeah. yeah. And yeah, Immortal, Immortal X-Men number 11, which I'm very interested to see what they do now with the fallout of the council shit. Uh, Spider-Man number eight. That's on the chopping block right now. We'll see how that goes post- uh, uh, yeah, um, Spider Verse. Are you still buying that too? You said you are. Yeah, I'm still buying it. Spider Man, and I know I a... <laughs> we got TMNT, Usagi, Ujimbo, Where When number two. I really enjoyed the first issue, and uh, that's stuff I'm picking up physically. And then there's a couple books I think I'm reading online. We got uh, Adventures of Superman, John Kent number three. Chris, if you're gonna catch up on that one, if you're interested in that, that oh, could yeah. be uh hairball number two the first issue was interesting uh horror book there and and the conclusion of where monsters lie number four really looking forward to that which I, I i've been a huge fan of that book i know we talked about that and uh uh you know i'm, I'm glad it's not overstaying it's welcome quite frankly just because it's been a lot of yeah. fun I, I don't think there's not much mileage i think in that and who knows if they'll revisit that storyline in that world but i think this has been a good length for this story at, uh, you know that being said because you know, it's not like it's like a 12 issue series or something like that. Right. I, yeah, you know, for fun, sure. Fun idea and, uh, and series. Yeah. So, all right. That all being said, that's what we're looking forward to picking up and reading next week, guys. Our favorite book of the week, Chris. Well, the favorite book I read online was definitely Iron Man. If I bought that one, I'd be in the running, but I'm going with uh, Harley Quinn. Nice. It's been a while. That's good to see. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, listen, for me, the runner up this week was Daredevil, but, uh, this is a book online for me as well that I read this week that I, I you know, unfortunately I'm, I'm disappointed I missed the boat on, but I'm picking up physically unstoppable doom patrol for me this week. I mean, just me even talking about it here and, and mentioning that in the show earlier that's in the running, you know, I, I, I guess it really, it, you know, Sometimes I don't register it if I read it online. I'm looking at my stack here usually, but when we get into talking about the books, you know, sometimes they kind of rise to the top that way where I'm like, yeah, you know what? That was really good. And I got to give it up to that Unstoppable Doom Patrol too. So yeah, I, I like how you, you divided your, uh, your, your thing with the online and physical uh, issue there. <laughs> well, if I did have that, uh, you know, I definitely want to like the books I have more than the ones, uh, uh, and if I do, do read a good one online, if I can track it down. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. 
I might. Well, we, we make the, we all have to make those decisions here about what we're, what we want to buy physically when it comes out and what we're dropping and what we're continuing it with. And then sometimes I feel like we don't take a flyer on some of these series and they turn out to be some of our favorite reads. And then I'm sitting here looking at my stock and I, I, I didn't really love the half of the other shit that I bought. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> It's hard, right? It's hard. To, it's hard to predict this shit, right? So, and then, like you said, we get suckered into books that we fi- we sometimes have uh, loyalty towards, like Spider Man and shit like that. And then, meanwhile, that's been a mediocre, mediocre title. That one, right? The dance lot one. So I don't know. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Anyway, so well, that's gonna do it for this week, guys. Lots of great stuff. Um, lots of things covered here this episode. Looking forward to more next week. And I will should say, next week is our seventy fifth episode, guys. Woo! oversized issue yes <laughs> like an anniversary episode there so yeah maybe we'll uh we'll have to think of something interesting to add to the conversation next week maybe we'll kind of give you an update on some of our favorite ongoings at the moment and stuff like that like we've done in the past or something of that nature that's those are always fun to check in on so uh yeah that'll be good so looking forward to it, chris thank you and uh as always all right thank you see you guys next time later guys <laughs>